We got a guy on the line. What are the chances? Do you think he let himself go at all this no, weekend? No, he's in great shape. These guys are all in great shape. Like they it's are not, in great it's, shape, it's, but they're still. I mean, they can they can have a good time, right? You, you know, celebrate, you get the boys together. Like, yeah, fair enough. Okay, Leafs Habs tomorrow night. Here he is, back on overdrive. Austin Matthews, how you doing, Austin? I'm doing good. How are you guys doing? We're doing well. Did you get a chance to celebrate any Canadian Thanksgiving this weekend? <laughs> Uh, not really, honestly. Um, I kind of went over my head that it was Canadian Thanksgiving and then, um, <laughs> didn't really, didn't really prep. So, um, okay. I'll just wait for, for the American one in a month or so. Yeah. It's right around the corner. Well, these guys were talking about during their careers, like being scared of weighing in after Thanksgiving, a Super Bowl party, a rookie party. What's that experience like in, in the modern game in the NHL, making sure that you know, the diets on the up and up. I don't know. I, I was, I was listening to you guys, uh, just before you, you brought me on and I kind of have to agree. Like nobody really, I mean, everybody's in such good shape now. Right. And everybody kind of looks after themselves so well. So, um, maybe the occasional day where you prefer not to step on the scale, but I think for the most part, like guys are pretty disciplined and, um, you know, not doing anything egregious to their bodies on days off or on Thanksgiving or, or whatever it may be. Austin, you talk about the guys and their conditioning. Do you think that that could possibly in the future lend to a shorter training camp? Like, do you guys really think you need three and a half weeks? Well, how long is it, Hayes? Is it four Yeah, about weeks? that. Yeah. 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 Like, don't you think you show up to camp, you skate for five days, you play three games, and then bingo, you should be ready to go? Or what's your thoughts on it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, now just like, yeah, everybody comes into camp in, in such good shape. And I mean, I, I've, I mean, I've heard it from guys I've played with from guys that, you know, played, you know, before this era and, and eras past and like everybody, uh, would kind of just allude to coming into training camp. Like you're kind of coming in out of shape and you're using that whatever three weeks, eight preseason games to kind of get yourself back into it. But I mean, now guys are just in such good shape and they're training constantly and, and don't really let themselves uh, get out of shape and in the off season to begin with. So, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing it maybe shorten up a little bit because it is long and, uh, you know, come week two, three, like you're, you're, you're pretty anxious just to kind of get the thing going again because, you know, long practices, long days, and, and you're just kind of ready, ready to go. So, uh, so, yeah, I mean, we'll see. Maybe we'll change someday. Yeah, absolutely. With Austin Matthews, uh, this was your eighth training camp up here in Toronto. I'm, I'm sure your rookie one is still somewhat vivid, and that was a pretty wild experience. But once you get to year two, three, all the way up to eight, like how much different is the feeling of each camp? And does anything even stick out, or does it just kind of all bleed into each other? And as long as you're happy and healthy, it's all good. Uh, yeah, I just think you, you know, you, you gain the experience from previous camps, from previous seasons. And, um, you know, I just think as time goes on, you kind of just learn your body, you learn yourself more and, you know, you kind of take what you need, what you don't need. And you're just kind of able to understand that a lot better, but um, it, it kind of bleeds in a little bit um, just because, you know, it's a lot of kind of the same repetition and just how the schedule works and everything. So, you kind of just get used to it, but it's definitely not something like I take for granted. I think it's always fun to to get to camp and see the guys again after after summer. Um, and just get together and spend time, and obviously put the work in on the ice and, and preparing for the season. But I think also off the ice too, and getting to know the new guys and um, just kind of becoming a team uh, slowly. How about the new guys? Do you think you're veteran enough to like take on a young guy and say, "Hey, you want to come and live at my house?" Or would that never happen? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I I think so. Like I told Nizy, if he ever needs uh, needs a break from JT, he's always welcome uh, to come. Yeah, but you got to gotta cook and everything. <laughs> you got to do everything for these guys. <laughs> no, no. Well, oh, you had who? Justin Williams I'm, live with you, or you had some kids live with you? Didn't I had you? a bunch of guys living with me because every time I was the only single guy that had a house. So if someone got traded to Carolina, I would say forget about the hotel. I mean, I didn't cook squat for anybody, but they were. Well, I hardly saw people. There was guys that stayed there I never saw, 
But I was not cooking for anybody. A free rent was enough that I thought. Yeah. That seems reasonable, doesn't it, Austin? Like, if you're going to let people move in, you probably don't have to bring much more to the table than that. No. I mean, maybe just clean up after yourself, do the dishes, and, yeah, call it a day. Yeah, I love my teammates, but I wouldn't let anybody move in with my house. Mm -hmm. I I, I can't have that. I like my own space. You got your own living style, exactly. Austin, I wanted to ask you about your your new teammates. Uh, A lot is being made of Tyler Bertuzzi and the way that – We'll just call him the look. He's got the he missing the jib. He's you know got the tongues hanging out of his skates. He's got the the no stick or the no tape at the end of his stick. Like do you look at him and go, how is this guy? How am I going to play with this guy? Or once you get to know him, you realize he's just a unique individual. Yeah, once you get to know him, you realize that's just that's just him, and he's not. It's not like a it's not like a show, or it's not anything. That's just like who he is. And I mean, at first I would. I don't know. When I was looking at his like setup, I just don't couldn't understand like couldn't quite understand how he could function out there um, <laughs> in any sort of capacity. But um, it works for him, and and he's been a lot of fun to be around and to get to know and obviously play with. He's an incredible player, and um, but yeah, I, I just I don't know. I don't think I could ever if you if, if I had to use his gear for like a practice or a game, like I don't think I could function <laughs> out there. Austin, how do you – season starts tomorrow. How do you set yourself up for the season? Do you kind of just let it fly and see what happens? Do you make individual goals for yourself individually and as a team, or you just go out there and play? I mean, I think, you know, always going in the season, you always – I always have things that I'd like to, whatever, focus on, um, you know, different goals, uh, you know, mindsets. But, I mean, I guess – we all know the the goal that we're after as a team and, and that goal never changes. And that's always at the front front of the line. And, um, you know, I just try to take it day by day. And, you know, as the season gets going, obviously it's, it's very exciting to open up tomorrow. And, and, and you know, pretty soon here, we're going to be a couple of weeks, a couple of months into the season and, and we're going to be playing every other night and uh, you know, just preparing ourselves for the grind that, that is the regular season and just trying to take it day by day and, and just staying present and focused on, you know, what we have, um, you know, right in front of us, uh, not getting too far, too far ahead of ourselves. But I mean, it's obviously always an exciting time of the year. And, um, you know, I'm really excited. I know the team's really excited. And, you know, it's been, like we talked about, a long training camp. And uh, it's on that, you know, now we're just getting to the real stuff. Well, Austin, uh, Sheldon talked about using you on the penalty kill. Is that something that you embraced? Is that you wanted to or maybe add to your repertoire as as a complete player is it how did that either conversation go down or is it something that you uh, are relishing uh, uh, that challenge yeah it's, i mean it's something like we've talked about a little bit the last couple of years um but you know obviously we lost some guys that were pretty key parts of the penalty kill and so just speaking with like sheldon and the coaching staff like this preseason and even before before camp started, um, I had an idea that that's something they wanted me to do, and uh, I'm really excited about it. I think it's been a good – it'll be a good challenge for me to, you know, step into that kind of role. And, um, unfortunately, we've got a lot of really good penalty killers on this team, a lot of guys that have been doing this for a little bit. Um, been leaning on Mitchie a lot, uh, talking with him, and, uh, and, and being, uh, you know, our PK coach, and uh, just trying to dial all that stuff in. But – uh, I mean, I'm excited. It, it was fun, um, you know, just kind of dipping my toes into the preseason. And uh, I just want to continue to, you know, kind of hone in on that, continue to get the details down and, and all, the, all the fun stuff that goes into that. But, you know, I definitely view it as, you know, a really good challenge for myself and something that I want to embrace and, and, and do consistently for the team on a regular basis. Chatting with Austin Matthews, Leafs open their season tomorrow night, uh, Montreal in town. You you mentioned that before you know it, you wake up, you're a month into the season, and and about this time a month from now, you guys will be flying flying to Sweden. You 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 and Detroit, Minnesota, Ottawa are playing games in Stockholm, and I'm actually on NHL.com. They got Willie's face up there, like Nylander's front and center for this, and you guys obviously have you played with a number of Swedes throughout your career. Um, putting the cart a little bit before the horse because you guys are opening tomorrow night. But 
how much excitement can come with something like that and maybe changing the pace of a season, like flying to Sweden, the All-Star Games in Toronto, you know, different things that make it feel a little bit different than, than maybe years past? Yeah, it'll be cool. I mean, uh, you know, we've never done a trip like this. So I know uh, all the Swedes are on our team are extremely excited to, to go back home. So we're expecting, uh, you know, them to set up the red carpet for us there when we get in town and have everything dialed in. But, um, no, it's exciting. And, you know, like you said, the All-Star Game in Toronto and, and stuff like that. I mean, there's there's obviously a lot of uh, really cool opportunities and really cool things uh, you know, that we can look forward to. But at the same time, um, you know, we got our work cut out for us and just try to take a day at a time. And when that time comes, you know, go and enjoy that and, and relish in that opportunity. How is uh, the transition for Brad Tree Living and Shane Doan coming in? Obviously, I think you've had a, a long relationship with Shane Doan, uh, but with Brad Tree Living, how has that gone initially? Yeah, it's been really good. I mean, Brad's, um, you know, he's a very personable guy. He's a great communicator. It's, um, you know, it's been really, uh, you know, easy to get to know him, and, and he's he's very transparent, and he's a guy that, um, you know, he, he's down there with you, and, uh, you know, you, you know, you know what he expects from the team, and he, he obviously makes that clear, but um, it's been great. Um, and I think he stepped in, obviously, not an easy position to, uh, step into, but I think he's made the most of it. And, you know, with him and Donor and some other people that we've added along, and, you know, I think they've been a great addition to, to our staff and to our team. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, working more with Brad, uh, getting, to, getting to know him more and, uh, you know, as the season goes along, as his journey goes along. So, um, you know, I think he's handled everything really well. And, uh, yeah, it's been fun. He was pretty open and honest from day one about how he wanted to sign you. He's been open and honest about wanting to sign Willie. Um, I'm sure, you know, above him, the same would apply. Brendan Shanahan has always been pretty open and honest about how much belief he has in you guys. Um, how how much of a benefit can that be in terms of preparation for a new season, confidence in the group, that you guys, like the core players, have been here a long time between yourself Marner, Nylander, Tavares is going into year six. Riley's been here even longer than that. Like, there's a lot of commitment to you guys. Um, how, how do the veterans kind of respond to that level of, um, I guess, commitment and, and confidence in what you guys can do? Yeah, I mean, I think it gives us, obviously, us confidence. And, um, you know, it's nice to have their support and, and their belief in us. And, you know, obviously, it's our job to, to reciprocate that, um, you know, to them. So, um, you know, it's like I've said before, it's, it's been a huge honor to, to be a Maple Leaf. I, I love playing here. I love playing in the city and, um, uh, you know, we have the best fans and the best fan base in the world. So, you know, it's definitely something that, you know, I wake up every day and I, I feel very grateful for. So, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's nice to have that, that trust and that belief from, uh, from management, from the staff and the ownership and all that stuff. And, you know, it's, uh, it's on us to obviously, uh, reciprocate that. So, you know, you've been here a long time. You guys have been in the playoffs every year since you've been here. Last year, you, you won around, you beat Tampa, and, and then you lose in five to Florida. So how do you balance, you know, the success of getting through the first round with, I'm sure, the disappointment of losing in the second round? I mean, yeah, like it's it, it's a clean slate now. Like there's nothing that we can really change. Um, you know, obviously it's, it's nice to have that experience. It's nice to, you know, have gone through that, went around. It was, you know, definitely a, a bit of a hurdle for us, you know, in the previous years that, you know, we hadn't been able to win around. So, um, you know, you, you gain that experience, you realize how, how hard it is to, to win and, and to put together, um, you know, games and rounds and, and win against teams that, that play tough. And, it's, you know, it's obviously a different ball game come that time of year. So, um, you know, it definitely gives you some fuel to the fire and, and you know, you kind of realize what those next steps are. But, um, you know, at the same time, I think there's 31 teams that go home pretty disappointed after the season, regardless of, you know, how you finish. And everybody's trying to, to get to the top of the mountain, and it's obviously not an easy feat. So, you know, it's just something for us to keep in the back of our minds, that experience that we've been through, but um, you know, continue to stay present, um, you know, continue to, to put the work in and set our standards as a team uh, as we go through that this 
regular season and, you know, with the back of our minds, obviously being, um, you know, April and, and that stuff as well. But um, we can only control so much at, the, at this point in time. I got to ask you before we get you out of here, I've seen some clips of you guys at the grocery store. Did you think that that disguise you had on, like, <laughs> I, I think people knew that you were Austin Matthews, don't you? Or I think you needed a mustache or something. Yeah, I didn't know. Uh, you know, they said something about, like, disguises, and we got there, and they thought the hat and glasses was going to be, you know, that kind of suffice. But, like, did that lady you were doing uh, the clearly, push-ups for, did she not know that you were you? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Um we got to get, like, uh, I wish they could do, like, a blooper reel or something like that. I feel like, you know, there's some stuff that maybe they couldn't put in the in the video that um, <laughs> was pretty funny. And, um, but, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was funny and, you know, not really offside, but definitely, like, there's definitely some funny moments from the day. And I think the video and everything turned out really well on a really good day. Um, you know, kind of surprising some people, taking care of some people's groceries uh, on a on a nice Sunday morning. But, um, yeah, we were in tears at some, at some point in time during that because there was just a lot going on. And, um, some people had no clue, so that was kind of the best. Uh, you know, when you <laughs> found somebody that didn't really know what was going on, uh, that kind of makes for the best uh, content for sure. <laughs> yeah, I got to imagine, like, that's a Sobeys commercial that you guys were doing. We're, we're watching it up on TSM4 right now. Like, you guys, we saw a video or some stuff posted online. You guys were at the Drake show over the weekend. Like, there probably isn't many places you can go in the city where you're not aware, like, someone's going to know it's me, right? Like, some, like, if you go to a Drake show, there's got to be a million people calling out to you guys. Like, what, how do, what's it like being Austin Matthews, being a Maple Leaf, going to a show like that and being out in public when... Obviously, basically everyone in the city knows who you are. I mean, honestly, it was fun. Like, you know, they they take care care of us. Like, we were in there, uh, we were in and out like pretty smooth. I mean, obviously, <laughs> like you said, like people are are going to recognize us at times and stuff. But um, I don't know. I like, kind of just kind of just get used to it. People are pretty respectful, and um, you know, I don't find it to be too uh, too overbearing or too overwhelming. Like. You know, he just kind of comes with like the territory, I suppose, just because of you know where we play and and the market and the city and just how passionate they are about the team and about hockey. But um, yeah, I mean, for the most part, people are pretty respectful and um, you know they take take good care of us, and so we were set up pretty nicely there. Had a box and um, you know a good group of guys that came and watched, and uh, he put on a good show for us. So you know, it was a lot of fun. It was a good night. Well, get started tomorrow night. Uh, Lee Sabs. Down at Scotia Bank. So good luck tomorrow night. Good luck with the whole season. Uh, we appreciate you finding time for us, and, and hopefully we get to do it uh, down the road. Thank you, Austin. All right, guys. Sounds good. Take care. Thank you.